الحمد للہ رب العالمین و صلی اللہ وسلم علی نبینا محمد و علی علی و صحبہ و سلم اما بعد احبت فی اللہ one of the very important matters related to our religion is the issue of nikah or marriage and marriage and nikah is from the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam and due to this regard it's very important that we have some understanding and some fiqh regarding nikah and marriage so I felt that it was uh, important that we take this time and we benefit from the kitab uh, Umdat al-Ahkam, uh, the book of the chapter of marriage. And the way we will study this book or study this chapter is we will take some of the benefits of the ahadith in there and we'll try to cover all the hadith in um, in this chapter of nikah and we'll deal with some of the issues of marriage and we'll take that from some of the books of fiqh because umdat ahkam is a book of fiqh but it is fiqh sunnah meaning that it is studying the fiqh from the hadith themselves studying the rulings and the masail bring, bringing the masail from the hadith Whereas a book that's just a thick book, for example, un, uh, in accordance with a madhab, like the imam, uh, the madhab of Imam Abu Hanifa, or the madhab of Imam Malik, or the madhab of Imam Shafi'i, or the madhab of Imam Ahmed, rahimahumullah jami'an, that those books generally deal with the masail, and then they bring the adillah. So they bring the issues first, and then they bring the evidence for those issues, and the uh and, and and so forth for for their uh in order to support their various uh views regarding different issues so in the book we'll jump right into the ahadith kitab al nikah an abdullah bin mas'ud radiyallahu ta'ala anhu qala qala rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ya ma'ashir al shabab man istata'a minkum al ba فليتزوج فإنه أغض 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 للبصر وأحسن للفرج ومن لم يستطع فعليه بصوم فإنه له وجاء رواه بخاري ومسلم. So this is a hadith in Bukhari and Muslim as the عمدة uh, حكم the ahadith there are all either in Bukhari and or Muslim. And so they're all sound hadith, and this is one of the great benefits of this book, Umdat Ahkam. And so the hadith is the hadith of Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu, who said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, O youth, you know, Ya Ma'ashir al Shabab, referring to uh, all, all the, the youth he was addressing. So this could include men and women, of course. Whoever amongst you is able to alba'a uh, faliyatazawaj. So whoever from amongst you is able to have the means for marriage, then they should marry. And then he said, for verily it is, it helps you uh, lower your gaze, and it's better for your guarding your private parts. And whoever is unable to marry, or this ba'a, then it is upon them to fast, for verily that will weaken their desires. And with regards to this, we'll get into the meaning of some of the terms like al ba'a. And this term is in reference to uh, the ulama have a uh, difference, difference of, of opinion with regards to this term. وَاخْتَلَفَ الْعُلَمَاء فِي الْمَرَادِ بِالْبَعَةِ هُنَا عَلَى قَوْلَيْنِ يَرْجِعَانِ إِلَى الْمَعْنَى وَاحِدِ 
أساح أساحهما أن المراد معناه معناها اللغوي وهو جماع. طيب. So the scholars they differ over two different opinions, and to keep this precise, we won't go through all the Arabic, but we'll just try to I'll try to uh, translate and and just bring what we need. So the scholars they differ, and they have two different uh, uh, opinions regarding this term al ba'a. So whoever is able al ba'a al ba'a, uh, then they should marry. So the scholars, a group of the scholars, and this is perhaps according to the author here, the most correct of those opinions is the linguistic meaning of this term, which refers to having sexual relations. So then those scholars that hold this view, they say that this hadith means, so whoever, من استطاع منكم منهم الجماع لقدرته على المعونة وهي معونة النكاء فليتزوج. So those uh, who are able to have have the ability to have relations, meaning that they have the strength and they have the desire and so forth, uh, and the ability financially, then they should uh, marry. And therefore, those who are unable to marry due to their inability to have relations or their inability to uh, be able to finance and pay for the cost of, of having, taking care of a wife and caring for a family, then this person should fast. And this is in order, the reason they're fasting is in order to protect themselves from their desires and to protect themselves from falling into sinfulness. Because fasting is a means for weakening the desires. So this is one of the uh, one of the aqwal uh, or one of the polls of the ulama, one of their opinions regarding this term. The other qawl, the other statement, or the other view, is that what is meant with regards to uh, this term al-ba'a, which is mentioned in the hadith, so whoever is able to, then they should marry, that this is in re reference to those people who have the provisions, they have the financial provisions. So that whoever has the financial means for nikah, for getting married, then they should marry. And for those who are unable financially, then they should fast in order to protect themselves from their desires. So they have this view and with regards to that, the next point in the hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, فَإِنَّهُ أَغْضَ لِلْبَصَرِ وَأَسْنُ لِلْفَرَجِ وَمَنْ لَمْ يَسْتَطَعْ فَعَلَيْهِ بِصَوْمِ So before we move into that ibarah, that statement, we realize that the ulama, they have two views about this, about the meaning there, that some refer to the means, having the means, the financial means, and another group of the ulama have the view that it refers to the sexual prowess, so to speak, akramakum Allah. And perhaps the most correct is that it refers to both, as uh, the first group of scholars tend to have that, that statement. And the Prophet ﷺ gave us the reason, فَإِنَّهُ أَغْضَى basr That it is... Uh, be by marrying, this will help one to lower their, his or her gaze. And it is better for protecting your private parts, obviously, because if you're lowering your gaze and you're not involving in the muharramat, uh, which is either you're 
have halal relations or you have haram relations. So this will help you to control your desires. And then whoever is unable to, then they should fast. Ibn Daqiq al-Eid, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, Yahtamil al-Amrain. So here he is synthesizing those two aqwal. Uh, and he says, فَإِنَّ تَقْوَى سَبَبْ لِغَدْ الْبَصْرِ وَتَحْسِينَ الْفَرْجِ So he says, verily that having taqwa, you know, God-fearfulness, doing the commands of Allah and avoiding His prohibitions. This is taqwa. By having taqwa, this is one of the reasons that helps us to lower our gaze and protect our private parts. And this also helps to control the desires and this and our desires are that that which encourages us to of course have relations in nikah. And after having after marriage of course and this is nikah, when we reference nikah here, we're referring to nikah as in marriage because it has uh, different meanings in the Arabic language and we'll possibly get into that later. Because nikah, it weakens this, those things which call you to fulfill your desires, meaning that you will fulfill your desires in a lawful manner. So those things that encourage you to do it unlawfully will be weakened by having the lawful means to express yourself sexually akramakumullah and it will help you for you kun aghdul lil basar wa ahsanu lil faraj mimma idha lam yakun fa in waqa'a fi'l ma da'fa da'i ila waqu'ihi andar min waqu'ihi ma wujud da'i so he he mentioned that this will help uh, to lower the gaze and to protect the private parts. And if it is not in place, of course, meaning that a person is not married, then it is easier for them to fall into uh, fulfilling their desires, of course, in an unlawful way. So this helps to weaken those things which encourage you to fall into the muharramat. From some of the ahkam or the benefits of this hadith, we'll get to the most important aspect. Qala ibn Mulaqan rahimahullah ta'ala ma mulakhasihi al amr bin nika liman istata' wa taqat nafsuhu wa huwa ijma' lakinnuhu indal jamhur amr al nadab la ijab fala yalzam tazawaj so the first point that Ibn Malakin rahimahullah ta'ala he mentioned as a benefit from this hadith this hadith um, commands us to get married as a community to marry for the person who is able to and has the ability uh and also who has the ability to even control themselves, that this is a, a command. And he said, and it's the, according to the ijma of the scholars. Or he says, wuhuwa ijma. I'm not sure if here he's referring to relations, or he's returning, he, he, perhaps this is, uh, he's referring to relations here. And he says, however the jamhur, so this is obviously, he's referring to relations. He's saying that, that uh, the majority of the scholars say that this command that's mentioned in this hadith, Faliyatazawaj, is in reference to the fact that marriage uh, is mustahab. So to the jamhur of the ulama, most of the ulama, is that marriage is recommended not that it, and, and not an obligation. So it is not an obligation to marry or to, of course, have right-hand possessions. And he says, regardless of whether a person is fearful of falling into fahisha 
or not. So this is what he's saying, and this is the jamhur of the ulama, hold this view. So we'll get to the other view, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best, but I believe it's the most correct view, and we'll get to that view when we talk more specifically about nikah itself. And he said, وَقَالَ Dawood وَمَنْ وَافَقَهُ مِنْ أَهْلَ ظَاهِرِ So the zahiriyah, those who take the apparent meaning of the hadith, they make their judgments and their fit comes from the uh, apparent and open, uh, clear, open meaning from the hadith. They say that it is an obligation, and I believe this is the most correct, uh, for the person... For a person to marry, if they are fearful, meaning they have the ability, and they're fearful of falling into sinfulness, even once, okay? Not, this, so this is the Zahiriyah. They have this view that if a person is fearful, even one time of falling into zina, that they're, they're very close or they're very scared on the, for themselves uh, during their life. Then, then it becomes an obligation upon them to zoage. So this, uh, to marry. Uh, and this is one of the narrations attributed, or one of the statements also attributed to Imam Ahmed. Uh, also, it is the madhab, or the, uh, it's the madhab of the Malikiya of Imam Malik as well. And also, uh, this was reported by Mazari, Mazari, which is a Maliki scholar. Another benefit of this hadith is it is a command to fast for the one who is unable to uh, to be able to uh, fulfill the command of, of of marriage, the order to be married. If so, this is a uh, the one who's unable to marry, of course, then they should fast as the Prophet Sallallahu said. Another benefit of this hadith is from this hadith also, it shows that a marriage is better than fulfilling uh, nawafil ibadat. Meaning, to, it, it's, better than, it's better to get married than to refrain from marriage and say I just want to uh, do Talib al ilm for the next 20 years or I just want to do and marriage will distract me or I just want to really focus on my worship on my prayer and, and fasting so I don't have time for marriage so it's better to marry than that this hadith is evidence for that because the Prophet Sallallahu commanded that and this is the madhab of uh, Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah ta'ala also from this hadith is this hadith also encourages us to lower our gaze and that's a command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then also what can be derived from this hadith is also this hadith uh, it encourages us to protect our private parts and Avoid, and it shows and illustrates that uh, masturbation is impermissible. And with regard to that, Imam Shafi'i has some really beneficial statements that he uh, that were reported on him in his book Al Um, or in his book. And he mentions the ayat where Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Walladina hum li furujihim hafidun illa ala azwajihim." So uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi kitab al -kareem, and those who uh, preserve their private parts in Surah Al-Mu'minun, uh, except for with their wives or those who their right hands possess. Uh, for those who do not do that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Al-Adun refers to them as Al-Adun, Hum Al-Adun. So those are the transgressors. So it lets us know, uh, so Imam uh, Shafi'i said that it, it, it's clear that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that the believers that they uh, preserve their private hearts 
except from their spouses or the, those whom their right hands possess. Uh, and other than that is impermissible other than the, the, the um, you know, having other relations besides your wives or your right-hand possess, uh, possessions, that this is impermissible. So from this, uh, Imam Shafi'i says, فَلَا يُحِلَّ الْعَمَلْ بِذَكْرِ إِلَّا فِي زَوْجَةِ أَوْ فِي مَلَكَ الْيَمِينِ وَلَا يُحِلَّ الْإِسْتِمْنَاءِ وَاللَّهُ أَعْلَمْ So Imam Shafi'i said from this, he said from this ayat, this verse, that... It is evidence, it shows that it is not permissible to, if you want to say, enjoy the private parts except for with one's spouse or with the one's right hand possession. And that it is impermissible masturbation. So here he used this uh, verse that we mentioned to show that masturbation is impermissible uh, is impermissible and that because Allah mentioned that the the mu'minin that their characteristic of of iman is that they protect their private parts they guard their private parts except for with their spouses and their right hand possessions letting us know that anyone or anything other than those mentioned would be haram. So of course, wa'iyad billah, those people who have relations with animals or, or any other things that they do, or jinn for that matter, or they masturbate, as Imam Shafi'i mentioned. And then he also mentioned the statement, uh, which is beneficial for us, and we'll end on this, and this is a statement of Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah. He said, well, istimna la yubah in the Akthar ulama Salafin wa Khalafin. So, uh, uh, Khushia al Anat, O Lem Yaksha Valik. Wa Kalam ibn Abbas, ma Ruya an Ahmed fihi, in the ma hua liman Khushia al Anat, wa hua zina, wa liwat, Khushia shadida, Khafa ala nefsihi, min wukui fi valik. فَأُبِيحْ لَهُ ذَلِكَ لِتَكْسِيرَ الشَّدَّ عَنَتِهِ وَشَهْوَتِهِ So this is very uh, beneficial statement of Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah. So he said that uh, masturbation is uh, not permissible to most of the ulama from the Salaf and the later generations. Uh, regardless of whether an individual is fearful of falling into uh, Fawahish, uh, uh, meaning zina or these kind of things, or they're not fearful. So, meaning that uh, masturbation is uh, impermissible. And he said, and the statements of Ibn Abbas, which was narrated by Ahmed, Imam Ahmed, Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anuhuma, wa Imam Ahmed rahmatullahi alayhi, with regards to this, is because there's a statement of uh, Ibn Abbas basically referring that, of course, uh, and I don't have the statement here, but what the general meaning, from what I recall, is it refers to that the uh, that masturbation, of course, is better than uh, fall, uh, doing zina. So it would be better, obviously, to masturbate than to commit zina. Okay, and this is this is Vahir, this is clear, that that's better than that, but they're both sinful. That doesn't remove the sin. So Shaykh al-Islam mentioned that, and he said, he said uh, in this statement of Ibn Abbas, that the way it should be understood is, is this is regarded the person who's fearful of fawahish, meaning falling into zina, or homosexuality, or sodomy, are fearful and, and this type and they have a severe fear meaning that they are really scared they are on the door of falling into one of these sins and they're fearful upon themselves into falling into the sin so that in this situation according to Ibn Abbas 
that it would be uh, permissible for this person in order to reduce the chances that they would do this fahisha, this this uh, wicked sinfulness, and fulfill their shahwa in a haram way. So it's it's har- but. The most correct, of course, is that it's haram under all circumstances, but of course, it is less of a sin than falling into uh, zina, of course. And regarding that statement, also, Sheikh Islam, he said, and as for the one who does this out of just enjoyment, meaning they masturbate just for, just for enjoyment, meaning... <laughs> Not because they really have a necessity, but they just, it's a habit. It's a, it's a habit that they love to fulfill. You know, they love it. Uh, or they do this uh, as, a, as just a habit. It's a habit of theirs. Or that they do it uh, because they look at it basically, in our day, we'd refer to it as pornography because back in the time of Sheikh Islam, he's referring to those people who looked at uh, pictures or they they had images or they they had some sort of pictures which they would masturbate to, Allah. And this is exactly the case now, but now it's more severe with video and live uh, activity. So, all of that, he says... فَلِهَذَا كُلُّهُ haram muharram. He said all of that is, is impermissible. And Imam Ahmed or anyone other than him doesn't hold that view that it would be permissible out of those situations. But rather they were saying for those who were seriously, seriously fearful of committing zina, uh, that they were very close. They were on the phone and they were, you know, whatever. They were making those those step taking those steps. They were very severely uh, fearful of falling into it. So they said in that situation, of course, uh, that that was that whole that it was uh, mubah or permissible under that one selective circumstance. And I hope that's clear. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good, forgive our evil. Wassalamu alaikum wa sallam ala Nabi Muhammad.